Hello, fellow Velvet Rumors. I want to talk about The Fool's Journey. It's the set dressing, the format for understanding the meaning of the major arcana cards, and it turns out, this story structure is hyper relevant for Persona, and in the newer games it's more deliberate with the introduction of social links and confidants. Without further ado, let's look at The Fool's Journey and how it relates to Persona. So what is The Fool's Journey? It is the metaphor for the journey that someone should go through in life to reach wholeness. Each major arcana card represents an experience, conflict, or person that the fool must encounter. That being said, there are 22 cards for this journey. We'll be using the Rider Waite deck and the Persona card art. It's the beginning. The fool is at their most pure and innocent, without even the knowledge of what pain is like. The card depicts the fool excited at the beginning of the journey, unaware of the hardships that are soon to come. The first person the fool encounters is the magician. The magician is generally the active male aspect and the achiever. They symbolize the power to tap into the universal forces and use them for creative purposes. The pose from the Rider Waite deck is akin to a lightning rod, channeling energy. But it's also a reference to the concept of as above, so below. This means that mind and matter are reflections of each other. What happens on earth happens in the heavens, and what happens in the mind happens in the outer world. The macro reflects the micro, and vice versa. Art imitates life, and I guess life imitates art. All of this to say that the magician teaches how to impact the world through concentration and willpower. In Persona, we get Yuka Ayase, Kenji Tomochika, Junpei Iori, Yosuke Hanamura, and Morgana. The most interesting thing for three of these is <laughs> they're all perverted male tropes, and they also all seem to have the same commonality regarding their strong sense of vision and dreams for the future. Uh, I guess except Yuka maybe. Yuka's almost like a reverse magician. Her fixation of life in the moment works to her detriment, though she is profoundly skilled. She's a great cook and she's very gifted at schoolwork. It's also important to know that the counselor is a variant and is similar enough in meaning. Next is the high priestess. She in a way represents the mysterious unconscious, a catalyst of creative events to occur. She sits behind a thin veil of unawareness which separates us from what we have inside. She's the counterbalance to the masculine magician. She prompts the fool to look deeper within and reach their untapped potential. The characters in Persona who represent this are Maki Sonomura, Fuka Yamagishi, Yukiko Amagi, and Makoto Nijima. Meeting this character is a catalyst for the events, except for Yukiko because uh, she sucks. A weird common thread for the Persona Priestess is their introverted and quiet demeanors with usually a bit of inferiority complex at play. It's worth noting the personas in this priestess category tend to be female, which is goddesses of wisdom and priestesses in a literal sense. Looking at their games, Maki is the driving force behind the game, though the protagonist is not the fool in that game. In P3, Fuka is the brain, whereas Junpei is the brawn, with her activity being that of the navigator. In P4, Yukiko is, uh, she's, she's there. She's just there. And in Persona 5, Makoto functions similarly to Fuka. Now the fool is more learned, more aware of their surroundings and who they are. Next is the Empress. This is the motherly presence, feelings, and sensations. The Persona representatives are Yukino Mayuzumi, Mitsuru Kirijo, Margaret, and Haru. This is tied to the gameplay with the Empress Personas often having good support skills and they also have ice attribute usually. With the exception to Haru, the women of this Persona Arcana tend to be wise motherly figures and not physically older but more mature and guiding. It's funny the personas tend to use ice skills as the demeanor of the characters can be represented as cold or even regal or a combination of the two. Now that the fool has met their mother, they should now meet their father, the Emperor Arcana. This represents structure and authority, another counterbalance. The Emperor balances the Empress's motherly embrace with enforcement of rules. He teaches the fool that restrictions can be infuriating, but they serve a purpose. In Persona, the protagonist for Persona 1, Hidetoshi Odagiri, Kanji Tatsumi, and Yusuke Kitagawa represent this. The persona in this arcana tend to be electricity based or physical, and there are almost always important male figures or kings. It's interesting that the people in the persona series who represent their arcana tend to have some deep seated issue regarding rules or norms. For Persona 3, Hidetoshi is on the student council and he's neurotically trying to find out who left a cigarette in the bathroom. In order to become the council president next year, Hidetoshi is also harsh and he's rude, abusing his power and accusing people willy nilly. In Persona 4, Kanji is fighting into the perceived rules of society. 
men can't like sewing, men can't like cute things, men can't like toys. So he's gotta be a little different. He's gotta exude the manliest mentality, otherwise he can't be a typical man. This manifests in some confusion with his sexuality, since if Japanese society doesn't allow for straight men to like hobbies like those, maybe he's not straight. Especially since he finds another character he thought was male to be attractive. And in Yusuke's case, he lacks authority. He's suffering at the hands of someone who's abusing the rules and societal expectations at the cost of Yusuke's rights. Next is the Hierophant. This is the stupid old word for priest in ancient Greece, and also can be the Pope sometimes. The fool leaves their home and ventures forth. They are exposed now to traditions and beliefs and education. This is what the Hierophant represents, a belief system. They teach the fool about their culture and help shape their worldview. The games represent the Hierophant with Kei Nanjo, the Kitamuras, the Dragon of Dojima, and Sojuro. The persona from this arcana tends to be mid. <laughs> and are full of priests, gods of wisdom, and a cool butler. The characters tend to lean on the older side, and are wise or at least have the rational thinking that comes with age, and they tend to fixate on the past, or better times. Nanjo isn't really old, but he's a logical boy in the group. The Kitamuras are an old couple who own the bookstore Bookworms, with their social link being about dealing with a tragedy from their past. Dojima is a competent person, He's good at his job, debatably, but he's unsure about his relationship with his daughter. The social norms of what a family is supposed to be is at the center of the conflict. And Sojuro is just Jigen from Lupin the Third. Sometime thereafter, the fool seeks out companionship and needs to be taught the compassion of a relationship. Enter the lovers. They help the fool determine their own values and questions, opinions, and beliefs he was taught. Representing this arcana are Lisa Silverman, Yukari Takaba, Risei Kujikawa, and An Takamaki. The persona here are usually healing support builds and they all suck. The women tend to be popular, cheerful, and usually more spirited than the rest of the cast. The lovers is meant to be the romantic love, not platonic love. It's interesting to note that all the lovers tend to be celebrities. Lisa has her idol group, Yukari becomes an actress, Risei is an actress idol model, and Anna's a model too. The unusual thing is that the stories for each character isn't necessarily based on the romantic love. Lisa does have a fixation on Tatsuya, but uh, Yukari has trouble with her mom but also falls in love with the protagonist. Risa has a crush on the protagonist but is also conflicted about her desire to return to idol life and an Anne wants to love modeling and herself. I think self love is the main factor occurring in these characters. Now that the fool has a strong sense of self. They need to control this. The chariot represents the overflowing ego when reflecting on all the successes the fool has brought upon themselves. The chariot is in control and has said control over all they see as well as themselves. This is represented by Masao Inaba, Kazushi and Ryo, Chie and Ryuji Sakamoto. These are generally the physical damage dealing persona, lots of war and conquest and physically powerful figures in the roster, and hey! Sometimes there's Astro Boy, Neza. These are driven people with a strong sense of self and are either aggressive or are quick to anger. Mark is a proud artist and he knows who he is and he has a rebellious streak. I gotta mention this weird inconsistency in which Persona 1 describes that he goes to New York to become a successful artist, but in Persona 3 he's still studying and he's in his 20s, so not to say that you can't study after becoming successful, but it's Come on, pick one, one or the other. Persona 3 has two chariots, Kazushi and Ryo. Ryo is available if you choose the female protagonist in Persona 3 Portable. Kazushi is a tough and focused athlete, but he's bearing the burden of a secret knee injury, which is amazing because I popped my knee before, and to this day my knee still hurts. I cannot imagine being able to mask it. Ryo is a hyper-athletic athlete. Her desire for control is her greatest flaw as her pursuit for perceived success is holding her down. Chie is struggling with control as she doesn't know what she wants to do, she doesn't know if she has any discernible skills, and she's a bit of a tomboy. Her arc is focused on her coming to terms with the idea of exploring who she is and what her strengths are. Ryuji is just great. He's also the Chariot Arcana in Persona 5. In the game, we find him to be much like Masao in that he's a rebel, except this is actually a bit of a farce. He's coping with his ruined reputation at the hands of Kamishida. He was the star athlete at Shujin. Kamishida came in and basically wanted volleyball to dominate and tried to damage Ryuji's reputation. In a fit of anger, he attacked Kamishida, who broke his leg. The injury affected Ryuji's athletic prowess, his reputation was tarnished by people knowing about his broken family, and even though he bore all the shame and the guilt and took the blame, Persona 5 decides that instead of, you know, having him finish a competent arc and making him a much loved character that everyone respects because of his strong sense of self, no, 
he's a punching bag for this game and every game after that he's in. So that's good. So the fool eventually wavers in their resolve. This is when they encounter strength. Strength teaches them patience and tolerance and the heart to keep going. Representing strength in Persona are Yuko Nishiwaki, Koromaru, Ko Ichijo, Daisuke Nagase, and the twins. This is the arcana of morality and power, the guiding hand behind the raw power. Another fizz attribute Persona roster, and just like the other ones, they suck. The characters in this arcana have strength of heart, and are meant to represent the same sort of person who isn't going to have a harsh emotional reaction. Yuko is the team manager, a literal tempering power. Koromaru is the option if you choose a female protagonist in P3P. Ko and Daisuke share the mantle in Persona 4. Ko struggles to muster the inner strength to come to terms with being adopted. And with Daisuke, it's the emotional strength needed to interact comfortably with the opposite sex. And Caroline and Justine are just these annoying kids that exist in the game. In Mate, the Hermit is an explorer. They are the next arcana of the full encounters. They guide in seeking answers to the deeper motivations the reasons we live. The hermit guides the fool with looking inward. Persona 3 has two hermits, the literal's teacher, Asaku Toriyumi, and the spooky student, Sayori Hasegawa. The fox is the hermit in Persona 4, and Futaba is the hermit in Persona 5. The way they use the idea of hermit in Persona is very superficial in my opinion, with the collected characters hiding away parts of themselves. The fox hides its kits, Futaba hides, uh, I don't know, her body odor, and Toriyumi hides the fact that she's a pedophile. And with Saori, She's really, really, really hermited. <laughs> Let me explain. She's just abused in basically every way. People claim they can't understand her because she spent two years abroad. She has rumors spread about her. She gets baited into a fake date. She gets tricked into taking a picture that paints her to be some sort of party girl. She stands up for herself once. Then she's sent away for being disgraced. Her former love killed himself. She prays for forgiveness for him all the time. What the hell? Why are my eyes leaking? <laughs> why is this all happening to her? And why is she the greatest? Well, her and the fox are the greatest. The rest can die a thousand tiny deaths. Now, the fool understands how everything is connected. The fool can see the wheel, the wheel of fortune. This is the representation of harmony, a miracle of destiny, and the design of the world. This arcana is represented by Jen Kurosu, Reisuke Hiraga, Ryoji, Naoto Shirogane, and Chiane Mifune. This arcana has the figures who are related to controlling fate, and the characters have narratives driven by the idea of fate in their own way. Jen has to deal with his alter ego, Keisuke does it by deciding between his own wishes and his dad's wishes for him, Ryoji does it by trying to be what he isn't, Naoto does it by trying to get around the cultural perception of women in Japan. She wants to be a detective and she knows that regardless of her skill, she'll be looked down upon by her peers and by society as being less than men. So she hides who she is and her gender as a result. And Chihia is a literal fortune teller with the skill of actually being able to tell fortunes. But she's trapped by the idea of fate and not being able to change it. The Fool then encounters a great deal. The deal provides the Fool with 2,000 yen in savings when they make a new account with my affiliate link. That's right, The Fool encounters Bai. Bai is an amazing service that allows The Fool to buy Japanese products from popular sites with ease. Sites such as Atlas's D Shop, Rakuten, and Yahoo Shopping. This means The Fool can buy their favorite Atlas goodies, then have them shipped to the Bai warehouse and then shipped to them. Something I neglected to mention earlier and before is Bai's repackaging. An optional fee, but it ensures a safe arrival, and I've used this multiple times. I've used it for my Persona 4 Dancing All Night Vita, the vinyls and laser discs I imported, as well as my little glass figure thingies. I'd highly recommend you try Bai out if you're interested in buying products from Japan, of which the fool can buy many things, including stylish clothes and books and more. Signing up supports what I do and guarantees I can keep making content at the breakneck speed which I'm doing it. So thank you Bai for sponsoring the video and please consider using their service. Now the Fool reflects on the cause and effect of relationships they've experienced up to now. They take responsibility for all their past actions and misdeeds. Justice helps with ensuring they are more honest. Justice gives the Fool a clean slate to begin anew. Justice is represented by Brown, Katsuya, Chihiro, Ken, Nanako, and Goro. Angels are common in this arcana. This arcana, the characters are usually fixated on fairness. 
Someone in the comment section can explain to me how this applies to Brown. For Katsuya, it's his perfectionist, authoritative disposition. For Chihiro, it's the ability to stand up for herself when accused of a crime she didn't commit, worsened by her accuser being a man and she has a fear of men. If you are the female protagonist in Persona 3 Portable, your justice is Ken. Ken comes to terms with his anger and his age and his need for vengeance, and also the way he's perceived by the C's members. Nanako needs help coping with her mom's death and the fixing of her broken relationship with her dad. And Garo is the vengeance-filled character, and just like Ken, he's a loser that no one likes. <laughs> the fool presses on. They're determined, they have the insight, they have the growth, and the sense of conviction. But they now begin to see life isn't so simple or easy. They encounter an experience too difficult to endure. This impasse teaches the fool that it's okay to let go of their goal or deal. The fool is now taught by the hanged man. The fool feels defeated, but through the grieving, they learn that it's okay to let go of control. The surrender rather than the fight can be just as, if not more, fulfilling. This arcana is represented by Baofu, Maiko, Naoki Konishi, and Iwai. This arcana is all about the self-sacrifice for the sake of freedom. I feel like some of the persona in this arcana are martyrs. Baofu is host to the guilt of fighting for what's right at the cost of someone he cared about. This vengeance kept him living in the past, but eventually he learns to let that go. Maiko was just a little baby. She struggles with the lack of control regarding her parents' divorce. Naoki learns to let go of the pain and self-hate he developed due to his sister's death, and Awai is one of the best characters in Persona 5. He grew up struggling, fell into the world of Yakuza, and he has to abandon this to become a competent parent. The Fool has ended all their old habits, and they're tired. At this point, the Fool favors a simpler kind of life. This is why death teaches the Fool how to end the aspects of the self that the Fool has outgrown. This process is like a transition, it's a metamorphosis into a new person, with new ideas of what is fulfilling in life. This arcana is represented by Ikichi, Pharos, Hisato Kuroda, and Tai Takemi. The persona in this arcana unsurprisingly uses dark based stuff and is generally weak to light. Ikichi is a shy and lonely boy who masked it with a cocky and loud personality. His personality was shaped by the bullying he endured as a kid and the fear of what his dad would do if his dad found out what kind of life Ikichi was living now. Pharos is a little kid and is literally deaf. Hisano is this amazing elderly widow. She feels terrible for outliving her husband and Tei is a just and noble woman who makes her medicine to save a terminally ill patient of hers. All the characters in this arcana have a heavy focus on the past and letting go to allow their rebirth. The past few arcanas have toyed with the emotions of the fool, which causes them to kind of pendulum between action and inaction, letting go and passionately moving forward. Temperance teaches how to balance this. The extremes that the fool has been kind of swinging between teaches them the importance of moderation and how much healthier that is. This arcana is represented by Bebe, Eri Minami, and Kawakami. These characters are meant to represent balance between their lives and their jobs and their hobbies. Bebe is a French weeb. The balance is within his love of Japan and his inevitable return to France. Eri is a stepmom in a new area trying to win over her stepson. And Kawakami is just like Toriyumi. They're both child predators. She takes on a second job due to the death of a former student. The fool has it good. Health in check, mind in check, and they're composed. Now the fool encounters the devil. The devil is the remaining ignorance or the feeling of hopelessness hidden within. It's worth noting how much this card resembles the lover's card, at least in the rider weight interpretation. This arcana is represented by Reiji Kido, Tanaka, Uehara, and Ichiko Oya. The characters here are meant to be sinful in some way, lustful, greedy, proud, etc. Selfishly acting and focused on whatever it is they think is important. Reiji is full of hate for his half-brother, blaming him for his station in life, and he wants to kill him as a result. Tanaka is a greedy salesman. Sayako is a lustful woman who learns to fall in love with being a nurse all over again. Oya is a paparazzi. She's addicted to her job and she doesn't care about the quality of her work. We later learn that she fell out of her investigative journalism due to the corrupt system. To rid themselves of the devil, the fool releases themselves from the tower, the ego fortress. The hard shakeup of the tower results in another revelation. The tower is represented by Mutatsu, Shu Nakajima, and Oda. This arcana has a lot of persona that are represented by heroes or some entities of destruction. 
and also Mara. <laughs> funny weeder. <laughs> the characters here are annoying. <laughs> Mutatsu is the monk who drinks up at Club Excapade. Turns out this guy abandoned his family. Shu is this pompous, annoying little kid who you tutor. He's stressed out because he needs to succeed. And Shinya is this boy who hangs around the arcade and he gets smoked. He's this elite gamer and that's basically all he is really. The stress and destruction of the tower causes all sorts of anguish for the fool. Luckily, the star calms them. The star represents tranquility. This is a hope and inspiration in card form. The fool is blessed with a renewed hope and inspiration and peace. The star opens the fool's heart to let their love flow freely. This arcana is represented by Ulala, Mamoru Hayase, Akahiko, Teddy, and Hufumi Togo. I think the commonality with all these characters is their hope. Ulala has all of her money stolen by a man, she's jealous of Maya, and she's somewhat in a rut. Mamoru is a great athlete who uses his athleticism to support his family who lost their dad, the former breadwinner. Akahiko replaces Mamoru if you're the female protagonist in Persona 3 Portable. He has a hope to protect everyone he loves. Teddy's hope is that he can find the truth out of who he is. He can even reach out for that truth, if you know what I'm saying. And Hifumi's hope is that people stop saying that she was meant to be a playable character because she never was. The Fool encounters the moon. Not yet clear, the Fool falls for the moon's illusions. As the moon can stimulate imagination, whether that's creativity, inspiration, madness, or fear. This is represented by Maya Amano, Nozumi Shinjiro, Ayabara, and Mishima. These characters are all masking their fears with trying to be someone they think is ideal. Maya is a bit difficult to explain, but all of her tragedy makes her act all cheerful and happy. Nozomi is extremely obsessed with food. He's also in a cult that scams people and he's struggling with insecurity because he's a fraternal twin and his fraternal twin got all the good parts. He's athletic and good looking and whatever. Shinjiro is outwardly cold and uncaring, but he's actually super, 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 super kind and cares deeply for all the Seas members and wants to protect them all. Ai is super vain and materialistic. She harbors a crush for the Strength Arcana, either Ko or Daisuke. She is deeply afraid of rejection and she does get rejected, so it sucks to suck, I guess. And the last moon is Mishima. He's this guy clout chasing the Phantom Thieves. And here comes the sun. Doon doo doo. The sun brings a clarity to the full. The sun shows the fool all the good of the world and illuminates the hidden places that the fool might not have seen. The sun imbues the fool with renewed vitality. This arcana is represented by Tatsuya, Akinari, Yumi Ozawa, Ayane Matsunaga, and Torinosuke Yoshida. This arcana represents happiness, optimism, energy, and accomplishment. Man. Tatia is like Maya in that I'm not going to explain this right now, so whatever. Akinari is a depressed and smart guy with a genetic disease that will leave him dead. He accepts his death and he accomplishes his goal of finishing a book. While his outlook on life goes from grim and dour to bright, and he really truly accepts the idea that life is worth living. For Persona 4, there are two Sun Arcanas. Yumi Ozawa, she's an enthusiastic and talented drama club member. In her private life, her father left her and then came back once he was gravely ill. She kind of basically struggles with the idea of acceptance with that. Ayana is this band girl who plays the trombone despite being tiny. She lacks a lot of self-confidence. Torinosuke is the best Persona 5 character. He's a disgraced politician. His whole narrative is focused on him trying to become a hero fit for office, while people remember him for his former snafus. The fool is reinvigorated, and now this is an excellent time for Judgment to have its day. Judgment asks the fool to choose. Choose further what values to keep and which to discard. This arcana is represented by Eriko Kirishima, the renamed Seas team, the renamed Investigation team, and Sei. This is meant to represent the balance of light and darkness, of acceptance and understanding life. The characters in this arcana are intelligent and fully aware of what's going on. Eriko comes and goes in Persona 1. Independent and smart, she even progresses the story at times with her quick comprehensions of the situation. The two teams from Persona 3 and 4 shift into this arcana once they gain the understanding of the situation and the resolve to enact their plans. Say Nijima is investigating the Phantom Thieves. She struggles with follow through. She feels trapped in her station. She's jealous of the perceived freedoms of the people she sees around her. She is well aware of the corruption that is rife around her, which also runs counter to her strong sense of justice. But she's also willing to forego the right way of doing things in order of getting things done. The fool re-enters the world, but this time with complete understanding. They're now whole, 
reaching a new level of happiness and fulfillment. The experiences all created a full and meaningful life. Now the future is overflowing with infinite possibilities. The fool knows to become actively involved in the world and to share their unique skills and talents. And in turn, the whole world seems to conspire to see the fool succeed. Now they will surely accomplish many things. In Persona, this arcana is usually something gained as a culmination of all the bonds the protagonist has made. So the fool's journey is over, but the fool is never meant to stop growing and a new journey is never too far off. And that's the fool's journey compared to the arcana in Persona. Boy oh boy. This was a long video. <laughs> if you stayed till the end, thank you. Some of you might have noticed that I left a couple of things out, outright ignoring certain arcana like the faith and Aeon and hope and whatever. That's because all those are alt cards basically or cards from specific decks. Another thing is that strength and justice were flipped. That's just how the fool's journey is arranged. And I believe that it's based on the Rider Waite deck. The parallels and faithfulness to this journey is pretty interesting because a lot of the meanings for the cards are one-to-one -one with the characters that are meant to represent the cards. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a lot of work, basically. So that's it. Uh, thanks, Bai, again, for sponsoring the video. Sign up with my link. Goodbye, fellow Mega Tennists.